So welcome to Arctic Wings RC. We are your northernmost flying hobby connection. We're a family run business here in the interior of Alaska. We've been in business since 2015. Over the years, we've worked hard to bring name brand products. Jeremy Roop, I am uh, one of the owners of Arctic Wings RC. The other one is my son, uh, Seth Roop. Arctic Wings RC is basically a specialized shop that sells brand radio control products. So that includes the surface vehicles like boats and trucks and crawlers, as well as flying contraptions such as airplanes, helicopters, and drones. We also specialize in 3D printing and then providing services and advice to, to customers unique to radio control. What makes Arctic Wings RC unique uh, is that we are the only radio control hobby shop uh, here in the interior. Uh, so as you can imagine, you know, getting uh, products up here to Alaska is somewhat challenging, mostly because anything that is hazardous materials, which that does include lithium polymer batteries, Li-Fi batteries, fuel such as nitro, all of that stuff is considered hazmat, even include all of the paints that we bring in. So the aerosol cans from uh, Duratrax, from Traxxas, all of those are considered hazmat and they uh, come with a great cost. Um, so it's very, very challenging running a business um, that you have to um, additionally pay not only for your shipping to come to Alaska, but also you know to pay for hazmat fees to come here. So trying to make a little bit of a, a profit on that is very difficult. And that's what makes it unique, is a tough business to be into. Uh, we are the only shop here in the interior that specializes in that hobby. But not only that, uh, you know we've been around flying hobby side of it for you know over a decade. My son does participate drone flying, helicopter flying, and so he's kind of given us that a little bit of an edge on knowing exactly what, you know, what type of products we need to bring in and the type of the flying that I think a lot of our customers, you know, know what they're looking for. That's what makes us unique. Hello, my name is Seth. I've been living in Alaska my whole life. My main hobby is flying RC airplanes, helicopters, and drones. I've also been involved in many Sun RC clubs FEV drone racing, which I took first place one year, uh, a few years back. I've also been involved in UAF's drone racing. So it was a drone race that was hosted by UAF at the Patty Center in Fairbanks. Took second place at that. I also um, take part of Midnight Center RC Club's events, such as flying RC planes, doing like competitions they have out there. You know, such as like who can do like the most barrel rolls, most loops, even who can keep the airplane up in the air the most longest. That was actually pretty interesting. Someone. Someone made it for like, I think nearly, it was like, what was it, like an hour, hour and 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. That was pretty, that was, and it was a glider, obviously. So, yeah, it was, that was amazing. So something I love, so the best part, in my opinion, of working in this hobby shop is being able to try out new things like new RCs, new RC cars, new airplanes, drones, helicopters, you know, even um, real flight, like the uh, simulator. For me, the hobby during the winter time offers a chance for me to build RC helicopters, airplanes, drones, you know, even offers a chance for me to kind of practice on simulator. No, it's just cold, chilly, dark. That's a problem with RC, like RC airplanes especially, you can't really fly them in the dark. For us, we mostly just build RC planes, build some gasser planes too, like the balsa planes and all that. Yeah, it just kind of, kind of keeps us busy, get customers in the hobby. Recently, I just got my uh, FAA Part 107 so I can uh, commercially fly drones. So it's basically a uh, drone, basically a drone certificate slash license you can get from the FAA. You just have to take a little, little ground school is all. So yeah, I can legally fly drones uh, according to the FAA. So yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Prior to that, you know, like our customers had to go online. If you were into the flying side of things, if you were into helicopters, if you were into the drone, if you were into FPV flying, um, you had to go online. That's what you were doing. You were not uh, going to be walking into, you know, type of shop here in the interior and being able to even really buy a prop, uh, buy an ESC. Uh, you certainly weren't going to get any specialized help. The reason that we opened our shop is precisely because of that. Uh, we started off because we were into the flying hobby side of things. Um, you know, uh, my family, my son, my dad. Uh, you know, we kind of grew up with, you know, radio control flight, and it's really. You know, it's, it's really hard when you have a specific product, um, whether it's a helicopter or an airplane or whatever it is, um, and our flying season or our summers are so short here in the interior uh, that you can't get a prop or that you can't get a special part or you can't get something 
because you know your local hobby shop here doesn't carry it, they don't have it, uh, or the item specifically is back ordered. Um, so you're either just out, you can't fly that that certain product, or you got to find another way uh, to make another product work for. It. There was another hobby shop here that you know specialized in the crawler world, but a lot of those, you know, some of the other shops that have been here before in the past, they either couldn't keep up or uh, they just couldn't meet, you know, what their customers were looking for. And uh, that's not a that's not a negative. It's not a dig, but it's just, you know, it's it's literally something you got to keep up with on the, you know, on the hobby side so that you can, you know, help out with that demand on what it is that people want, especially if you're going to be in this business. You know, the business picking up. You know, at first it was uh, it was super slow. I mean, uh, we specialized in you know, the flying market, you know, all of our, um, all of the stuff that we ordered, um, all of our customers, we catered to just that. So whether it's the airplanes or helicopters or the drones, um, that was primarily the product that we, that we ordered, you know, during that time frame, again, there was another hobby shop here that was specialized in the, in the surface vehicles and boats and crawlers or whatever it be, but they didn't specialize in any flying stuff. So that's kind of what gave us our start. Again, you're catering to a very small, market that is into those types of things uh, and that can be you know pretty challenging in itself and we're not talking about you know we're not talking about toys that you get from Walmart we're not talking about you know things that you go to Fred Meyer it's not on that scale these are hobby grade uh, planes um, helis you know flying contraptions that you know pretty basically they're four channel um, a lot of the stuff actually requires you know programming um, and it requires you know, hobby grade parts to be able to replace those things, especially if you invest in, you know, buying something that's a couple hundred dollars. You want to be able to change those parts out, whether it be a prop, uh, whether it be an ESC, whether it be a motor. Um, you want to be able to have the ability to change it out because it is an investment uh, to some extent, um, no matter really how cheap it is. So, um, you know, we wanted to cater to that market and, um, you know, be able to provide the interior, provide, you know, people here in the interior of Alaska where it's already very hard to get things. Uh, we wanted to provide that stuff for them, um, again, while fueling, you know, our own basic needs of being able to have product of things that we use to be able to get by for the summer and be able to fly. You know, our business started getting a lot more busy as we started getting more noticeable. Um, and it opened up into more of just the flying stuff. It opened up more into uh, bringing in surface vehicles, whether it's the boats, whether it's cars, whether it's, you know, rock crawlers, bashers, whatever it is. And with that came a lot of name brand products. Uh, so a lot of the products that we have are very name brand, whether they're coming from, you know, Horizon Hobby, whether they're coming from Traxxas. Um, we offer a huge variety of name brand products. And you know, as we progressed over the years, having the ability, or I guess maybe it might be more of the honor of being able to be a dealer for some of these manufacturers, uh, such as Horizon Hobby, Traxxas, um, back then it was Great Plains, you know, having that ability to be able to do that because they are the big hobby names. And with that, those companies want to be, you know, they want to be represented well. And we're not a big box store. You know, we are a small time shop and we are, you know, catering to our customers with that very specific thing. You know, those products that they um, that they have, whether it be a Traxxas Stampede, whether it be uh, an Axial, you know, SCX-10, whether it be, you know, a Losi. Um, those are the things that, you know, that we try to cater and, and carry the parts for. Um, and with that, you know, we also, um, we uh, expect our manufacturers um, to hold that line too. So when there's a problem with something, um, and there always is, uh, whether it be with a motor, whether it be with a you know a battery or whatever, you know a customer walks out and you know they have an issue with you know whatever product it is, they can bring it back and they can exchange it um, or just get their money back or whatever, um, and then we get to deal with the manufacturers on those. So. You know, being able to deal with those types of manufacturers is a big deal because we hold our manufacturers to that, you know, to that high degree of, I don't want anybody walking in here on Christmas, the day before Christmas, buying a vehicle for, you know, their little one. And the worst thing is their little one opens it up, you know, Christmas morning and the thing doesn't work. Uh, that's awful. We have been in those circumstances. Um, I've done, you know, uh, I've made those kind of purchases for my family. And when something doesn't work uh, prior to us, 
um, you are left with either dealing with you know online or reaching out to them telephonically um, and trying to get a return on it or trying to get a part to fix it. And uh, you know we make it pretty clear that you know you can come back to us and we'll make it right with you. Or one of our local service uh, shops ended up closing down uh, a few years ago, and uh, we ended up absorbing a lot of that a lot of that business. So a lot of the uh, you know the trucks the boats, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, we ended up absorbing a lot of that, um, which we had already been dealers for, we just didn't really, you know, we just didn't really push that lineup because we were, again, mostly in the flying business part of it. So that's when things really kind of started picking up for us pretty noticeably, but that was prior to COVID. Um, when, you know, COVID happened, and regardless of what your opinion is of it, um, you know, it really brought, uh, it really bought. It really brought a lot of businesses down to their knees. Um, it just about destroyed the economy in this country, um, in particular here in Alaska. You know, it really hurt. It was a very serious thing. There is no doubt, but it affected on how you could do business. And what we found um, is, and this is a positive thing, it actually put us on the map. Like it actually put us on the map uh, for the hobby. And part of that is. Uh, because we were such a small shop, we weren't one of these giant stores in some giant town that you know we were uh, mandated by all these city ordinances to do things a certain way. Um, we were a little tiny shop um, operating in interior Alaska, and we had a little bit more uh, leeway than than other places did. And what that meant is that we could have our doors open for a certain amount of customers to come in, browse, keep those lights on, let people come in and check things out. You know, absolutely we were abiding by, you know, the CDC guidelines, which is wearing the mask and social distancing and all that stuff. But what it really did is it gave people a little bit of hope and that they could come in when other places were closed or they couldn't, you know, get access to something. Um, they could come in here, shop uh, like they normally would um, and, and pick out something. A lot of what COVID did is it really limited product. Um, it limited manufacturing because if you think about that trickle down effect, I mean, you got people out there that are working in factories when all of a sudden they can't work in factories, but you got a limit, you know, to how many people are working in those factories and when they're going to be coming to work and all those things. Um, that had huge worldwide effects. Things that were going on back order for months and months at a time that we just couldn't get. And that's kind of where our 3D printing came in because uh, there were many times where you can't buy a product. For example, it might be a a brace for an airplane that actually holds your entire wing structure together you can't get them because they're back ordered because nobody's making them so what did we do we made them we 3d printed them and we kept people going um, and we weren't charging an arm and a leg for it uh, but we found out that you know we can we can make stuff so what it kind of made us be able to do is like you know we've we've had a, a large amount of manufacturers and distributors that we got to deal with uh, and as a result of that, during COVID, even though we might not be able to get a certain brand type of thing, we could get something else that, you know, would get somebody back in business. So, for example, you now we might not be able to get uh, an e-flight prop, but we could get an APC off-brand prop that would work for that same plane, um, and it would keep people going. Uh, same types of things for uh, for batteries. You know, batteries were very difficult. They were super backordered because of the manufacturing process that goes into those. They were massively backordered, but we had some other companies that were coming back online, and they were trying—they were trying real hard to push their products. Um, and we found out that those batteries uh, ended up working with these other, you know, manufacturers' products. Uh, so it was kind of a cool, like mix and match uh, type of thing that that you would get. Um, they kind of, again, it put us on the map of like, okay, we don't have this specific battery, but we do have this one. And as it turned out, this might actually be a better battery for what you're trying to do. Um, so we were able to keep the hobby business going during this entire pandemic and you know of course you know we had already been kind of put on the map about what we were doing and you know the, the the products that we were selling COVID really put us on the map I mean it kind of put us out there on like okay hey there's a shop in, in North Pole a uh, little mom and pop you know type shop you know keep things in the air and keep people going uh, here in Alaska you know we deal with um, you know a lot of our stuff especially our hazmat material uh, or our hazmat products, you know, um, they don't come direct here. Uh, they have to be barged in. And so, you know, we have uh, a very good source at Spain, Alaska. Um, 
we got a really good deal worked out with them where uh, basically a lot of our stuff is shipped to uh, Tacoma, brought up on a barge, and it works out. So, but again, we're, we're dealing with you know another company that has sometimes their own issues, which is sometimes really uh, bad weather you know, on the Alaskan seas coming up here, or they have mechanical issues on their barges. Um, and sometimes things are pushed out for a little bit. So sometimes in, you know, we're expecting things to come in in a week, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's a month. Um, and then out of that, sometimes they end up losing some of our products. So we've had you know, a couple of times where we've had thousands of dollars in products uh, just get lost because they didn't make it. Um, and we're, we're super lucky because you know, um, you know, we're dealing with you know, a, a company that's reputable. You know, they end up uh, reimbursing us for those. So we're not out a whole lot. We're out a little bit, but we're not, we're not out a whole lot. Um, so we're very, very fortunate to be able to work around you know, those types of things and have those types of contacts, uh, which again is very, very difficult here uh, in Alaska. You know, we're very supportive of um, other companies or, or other businesses you know, kind of working with us uh, to help drive things. And so, for example, we have an uh, individual who makes tire chains. Uh, we have another individual who's doing studded tires on, on vehicles, and they've been really popular. Um, and it's kind of neat because Alaska is so unique. We're not in California. We're not in Florida. We're not in Minnesota. We have our own types of snow conditions. We have our own types of weather conditions. And like true Alaskans, we RC all year round. I mean, it doesn't matter what those are. So it's been really cool seeing some of these um, other people come up with ideas on you know, their own products that might help drive some of these other, you know, some of the things that we sell. And we're very supportive of that. Um, so we want to we want to see that grow, um, but the biggest thing is we want to see the RC world grow. We want more people to get into it. Uh, we want people to come in here and shop around and, you know, um, ask questions. Um, we're not all about making a sale. You know, basically we want you to do your research and figure out you know what type of product you're looking for, and look at that manufacturer if you're looking at a specific name brand. Um, you know, look at the reviews, look at uh, what they have to offer, uh, look at the upgrades, um, look at what's available for them because, um, you know, we try to support all of the things that we bring in, um, regardless of brand, we try to support, you know, all of it. Uh, and we work very hard with our manufacturers to make sure that they honor that. Uh, so for example, you know, Traxxas, you know, Traxxas all the time is coming out with new vehicles. Um, when something breaks, you know, right out of the box for somebody, we really want to make sure that Traxxas is making it right when, you know, uh, they got a manufacturer, you know, error with something. Uh, same with uh, same with Horizon Hobby. Um, you know, that's why we strive to maintain, you know, those those partnerships with our distributors. It's really important. So we want to just we want to see that grow. Um, we want to see, you know, our local community really kind of go into, you know, get more involved in the flying field, you know, more involved in the service vehicles. You know, we're hoping to host some events uh, this year, much more than we did in the previous years, mostly because of COVID. It kind of prevented a lot of that stuff. Uh, but we want to help drive that a lot more and we want to see it grow. We want to see kids get involved uh, because it is a really awesome thing, especially, you know, nowadays where you can, you know, buy a, a really good truck and you can build it. You know, they have all these great builder kits uh, that you can put things together as a family. Um, and then you can basically uh, select your, your paint and your colors and what types of motors you want to put in and what types of batteries you want to run. I mean, there's just the, the customization of everything is so beyond what it was 20 years ago um, that it's amazing. It's a really cool hobby to get into, especially with your family. So that's kind of a big thing. Where's that going to be at in 15 years? I have no idea. I mean, we might be all be, you know, on an episode of Jetsons here in the next uh, 15 years. But, um, you know, really for the business, I definitely want to see it thriving. Um, we have plans to open, you know, to uh, build our own actual storefront here in the next few years. And, um, you know, really be able to offer, you know, uh, you know better service, um, more product, more lineup, um, and really just being... You know, we really want to be uh, your only uh, interior choice. You know what? No, we really want to be your only Alaskan choice for RC. That's really where we want to be. You know, I, I don't think we're fully out of the, the woods with COVID right now. I don't, you know, there, there's a lot of political stuff that's going on in our country right now that all affects market. It all affects demand. It all affects, you know, what's, what's being manufactured. Um, so, 
uh, you know, we're hoping just to keep things going and be here um, as a source for advice and for support for our customers. And we're hoping to build a bigger customer base. That's what we want.